Hello and welcome. Tonight, federal government challenges the people of the Niger Delta over oil pollution in the region. Attempt by suspected suicide bomber to infiltrate troops in Adamawa State fails as he is killed by soldiers. Senate committee deplores poor funding of the Niger Air Force, pledges increased allocation to adequately tackle insecurity. And world powers yield to pressure as Russia and the United States restart process in Switzerland to secure another ceasefire in war ravaged Syria. And in business news tonight, traders project Naira appreciation next week as international money agents disperse more forex to operators. On sports news tonight, Super Eagles captain Mikel Obi. Ahmed Musa and Kelechi Ihena shall make Caps shortlist for the 2016 African Footballer of the Year Award. M. Sulaiman Aled will begin tonight in Bayasa State, where the federal government has challenged the people of the Niger Delta on the environmental degradation of the region. The Minister of Environment, Mrs. Amina Mohammed, has asked the people of the region to stop blaming the federal government, but instead collaborate with it in the effort to end oil pollution in the region. Mrs. Amina Mohammed, who was speaking in Brass in Bayelsa State as part of a visit to some oil facilities in the area, explained that the federal government is resolved to cleaning up all parts of the Niger Delta region affected by oil pollution over the years. She however asked the people to play their part as well. The coastal town of Brass Island in Bayelsa State has been getting a lot of attention lately. It's the community where some soldiers lost their lives and it's also the location of the soon to commence Brass LNG plant. In addition, this community has other oil companies operating in our domain and because of their presence, brass is usually a hot spot for oil pollution. The Minister of Environment is here to have a first-hand assessment of the realities and possibly proper solution, despite doubts from some people about the sincerity of our visits. And coastal erosion is not an issue that you can blame any one person or institution. It's climate change, it's rising sea levels, and we have to do something to either mitigate or adapt to what is uh, bound to be. And I think that's something that we will also take back. We've uh, signed on now to the West African Coastal um, Erosion uh, Initiative by the World Bank, and we're hoping that we'll get some resources from them. And of course, places like this will be the first to benefit, because this is where it has been hitting worst um, over the years. Uh, all I can say is that uh, seeing is believing. And I've come, I've seen, now it's up to you to see what I do about it and uh, we're committed to trying to do something. The minister visited the paramount ruler of the Brass Town. His Royal Majesty King Data Spiff reveals that this visit is just the beginning as she intends to see and learn more about other forms of pollution in the region. Let's get that very, very straight. The oil, where is it now? It's polluting your place. Who is polluting? Who is polluting today? We're here cleaning up pollution that was done by the oil companies. They continue to do pollution, we will force them to clean. But excuse me, the oil is not only pollution from the oil companies. Let us talk through. An enraged minister replies her critics and advises that the good intention of the government should not be politicized. I get very, very annoyed about this because we're trying to rebuild this country. We spent four or five years wasting our money. Oh, come on, come on. How much money did we have and where did we put it? Huh? You want to check my bank account? Go and check my bank account. I came back from the United Nations with nothing. I will stay here with nothing, but I am ready to serve. Just like you are ready to serve. This is not political. She also assures indigents of the community of our government's preparedness to give them better living conditions. So there is problem everywhere. <laughs> Staying with the environment, we look towards Lagos State, which has begun the process of reading the waterways of debris and water hyacinth. This is part of the measures aimed at boosting water transportation and other related activities. 
To this end, two water hyacinth and debris removal machines have been procured by the state government for the exercise. Water hyacinth, also known as aquatic weed, has been a major concern for authorities charged with the management of waterways in the state. Besides the water hyacinth, there is also dumping of refuse on the waterways. These activities obstruct transportation of the water, sometimes leading to accidents. But the Lagos state government seems poised to end the menace. These newly purchased high-tech machines are deployed to remove water hyacinth and all kinds of debris on the waterways. The act is underwater lawn mower and cuts the vegetation, as well as collect and store weeds and debris. They are fitted with a pickup conveyor at the forward end, which can be lowered to two meters deep into the water for effective cleaning of the waterways. This symbolic gesture by the Lagos State Government is an act towards jump-starting the cleanup of our waterways and preparing ground for other revolutionary activities that have been programmed in the Lagos State Waterways Development Master Plan. I can assure you that this is just the first step towards the transformation of the Lagos waterways to world-class standards. We are using these two to encourage water transportation, to encourage fishing, so that the water economy will be improved on. This new development will eradicate the menace of water hyacinth on the marine ecosystems of Lagos State, particularly the Ikorodu, Aja, Badagri, Lagos Island, Oroshoki, Mile 2, and Ekwe Axis. Joining us now to discuss more on the issue of coastal erosion in Niger Delta and related environmental challenges is an associate professor, Alabi Shonaye, of the Department of Geography, the University of Lagos. Thank you for joining us, Professor Shonaye. Thank you very much. Quite a lot is happening, and uh, with the recurring ocean surge we have seen in parts of uh, the Niger Delta states, do you think that uh, we can actually salvage the situation? Well, the situation is, uh, is bad already, but it's not worse. So there is still an uh, opportunity to improve. Uh, oil uh, boom was uh, since 1970s and thereabouts. And this probably had been there, but it only came to limelight some few, one, two decades ago. But since then, uh, even before then, uh, studies had shown we had done some visits with uh, done a lot of uh, investigations and uh, you could see almost all the settlements by the coastline right from uh, around Ogidigbe, around Escravos, uh, Chevron properties to Akasa, to Trombras, even to as far as uh, Okubo or Nandoni River is, is a general problem. But the other fact is that uh, it's not only the coastal settlements that are having this problem. Even when you look at the uh, uh, Eastern states, I'm talking of uh, the uh, southeast now. Everybody is talking of gully erosion. If you go towards the north, they are telling, talking of uh, wind erosion, Aeolian erosion. Lagos also has its own share. So uh, and and if you look at it, it will seem as if uh, every region, the six geopolitical zone, we have one or two states that is uh, really battling erosion. But what can the federal government do to assist in some of these states, specifically Delta, Ondo, Bayelsa, and River State? The government, I think, has been doing a lot, uh, but we are yet to see the results. Uh, beyond the direct uh, involvement, of course, we've heard of a lot of money that has gone into ecological funds. Every state of the Federation collects ecological funds every year, every month rather. And uh, this has run into trillions of naira over years, why at least think, for the past 10 years. Why do you think we haven't seen any result? Well, <laughs> we, we all know the problem we have in the country, corruption. Uh, we, we also have the problem of trust. People can't even trust whoever is bringing it. NDDC is also doing its own. Uh, the state governments are trying their best. We have development partners here and there. NGOs now and then will come up and say they want to do this and they want to do that. But we are here to see the results. Going by what the minister said, you, you saw her earlier on uh, really miffed and disappointed at uh, the attitude of some people within the region. Would you say that is the only place to put the blame on? 
I think I think this is one of the first time that we can have we we've seen a minister, a lady for that matter, going to as far as uh, brass. Uh, brass by water from Port Harcourt is about three and a half hours on speedboat, and you have to pass through those areas that are considered very fairy. Uh, I'm talking of places like Suku, places like Bile, places like Nembe. That you, once you hear the names, you shiver. For the honourable minister to have gone to that far, it means that. Uh, there is this new level of seriousness and uh, uh, I think maybe change so to say but the people's confidence needs to be rebuilt uh, so many other people that really want to help should come up I, I ask myself sometimes the oil companies uh, the oil and gas companies I think this place is a uh, brass area in particular is uh, is dominated by our jeep operations uh, even if it is 100 meters every year that the oil companies are trying to protect every year from their budget as part of a community assistance project, assistance project uh, it will go a long way. But it's not only big towns like uh, big cities like Boni, like Brass, like Nimbi, like uh, Wari that are having these problems. The communities that are really having these problems are very, very small and they cannot be heard. We are not hearing them. But they have lost a lot. Both properties, uh, resources, uh, flora, fauna, some that we can never get back. You know, Professor Sean, I, I know you've done extensive work in that region and you know virtually all the communities there. But this time, away from the oil communities, what do you think the people can do to help themselves? The, the people themselves, they are also part of the problem. Let, let's, let's be frank. Uh, if the, the series of dredging activities going on there, deforestation to a large extent, even if it is for firewood, for settlements, uh, for communities, and so uh, All these are like uh, contributory factors to these problems. And uh, uh, by the time uh, we now have the uh, ocean issues, uh, sea level rise, uh, some of the things that the, mini, the Honorable Minister mentioned, definitely we have uh, the accumulation coming up. But it seems the people, if, if, you, if, you, if you listen to the Honorable Chairman uh, uh, of uh, Brass local government, he's, he's not convinced that the government can do it, but we need to just have this trust. We need to trust ourselves and we need to believe that, well, we have a government that is really ready to do things different from the way we were doing it before. You, you know, talking about government quickly, let's see if we can bring Lagos in. Uh, earlier on, we saw Lagos uh, getting ready to clear the water hyacinth. How can this really help the waterway and the path? Don't forget that it was only recently we saw uh, uh, the Ogun River area dry up uh, as a result of water hyacinth and debris. Yes, the Ogun River problem is, uh, is just one problem just from the blues. The communities, I think when we were discussing it here the other time, the communities that are really suffering from this are some of the communities that have been mentioned. Uh, some of them are sometimes trapped, the fishermen are trapped for days, they can't go back to their communities after their fishing expeditions and so on and so forth. But good idea that we have the harvesters, uh, at least it's a means of mechanical clearing of the uh, seaweeds and so on and so forth. Two questions we should ask ourselves. One, what happens to what is collected? Because a single seed can multiply so rapidly. Then number two, uh, the, the creeks, they link each other. If Lagos State is able to clear its own creeks, what happens to Ogo State? What happens to Abigi? What happens to Iwokmi? Then the water I think we should still go back to history. And, uh, the, the information is that the water I think actually came in from uh, Badagri Creek, from uh, Kotonou Republic. So there is need for this collaboration. As you are clearing your backyard, also think of your neighbor. Your neighbor should also clear his backyard. Otherwise, the problem with your neighbor will come back to your backyard. Professor Shonaya, thank you for joining us on the News at 10. Thank you very much. In part two, after the break, Delta State Government takes campaign against Lassa fever to the streets of the state capital. That's another look at the environment there. Please join us again.